We were interested to know whether concussion in the general population leads to long-term cognitive or brain deficits. So what we did is we recruited a large number of people from the general population, almost 20,000 people in fact, uh, and we got them to tell us a little bit about their concussion history, if they'd ever been knocked out, and if so, how many times. And then we got them to complete 12 cognitive tests online that assess things like their ability to reason and plan and solve problems and remember things. And what we found is that those people who reported having been concussed during their life performed more poorly on one of these 12 cognitive tests. And not only that, but the number of times that people reported being concussed dictated how poorly they performed on the task. So once we had this enormous data set, we could make a prediction. Would we see the same specific cognitive impairment in, say, a group of athletes who are involved in a sport that involves uh, head impacts, coming into contact with other players? Uh, so we took a group of uh, varsity footballers. Um, we know that they played many seasons of football. Um, we didn't take account of whether they'd ever been concussed or not, but we just looked at their performance on the same 12 cognitive tests. And surprisingly, I think, they were impaired in exactly the same way as the general population. That is, they had this really specific impairment in the test of inhibitory control. If you have an impairment of inhibitory control, uh, it means that you're likely to carry on doing something when, when perhaps you should have stopped. So, for example, running an amber light when it, it may have been safer to stop, or uh, on the field it might mean that a, a player would continue with a tackle long after they've heard the, the whistle to stop. Okay, so although we did see a lower performance on our task of inhibition, we did see very typical performance on our tasks of memory, uh, rotation, um, and deductive reasoning, um, which is really the, uh, a very positive thing for people who have sustained a concussion, that they don't have devastating effects on their cognition over the long term. What I think is the most interesting thing about this study is that we were able to predict the exact pattern of deficits that we would see in the football players from a completely unrelated group in the general population. So we, we took the general population, we asked them if they'd been concussed, and we looked at their cognitive performance on a series of tasks. And then we used that information to correctly predict what we would see in the football players. And I think that's absolutely amazing. I think the study is a great example of getting the general population involved in science. Uh, we couldn't have done the study without these 20,000 people.